What's up, people? Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. We got two this week, two that are going to be out on iTunes and SoundCloud, and then another three on Rockfin. Okay, so if you want to hear some badass fighters, I'm doing some great interviews this week. Uh, great interviews on Rockfin, R O K F I N forward slash Adam Hunter. If you like what you hear, endorse me there. It comes out to like two fifty a day or something. Two fifty a week. Two dollars and fifty cents, not like two hundred dollars. All right. And I'm talking to Shane Burgos over there, Vince Morales, Charles Rosa, Ryan Spann, Taiwan Air, Claxton, Brandon Davis, all on Rockfin this week, all UFC or Bellator fighters and all with great stories. Um, I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, Speedweed, they will, it's the best, okay? It's the best marijuana, and it's its hand-picked, just like, uh, what's the name's opponent this week? Uh, what's Jack Reacher? What's his name? Jack? <laughs> Jack Swagger. Jack, Jack Swagger. Uh, Jack Swagger's opponent. Hand-picked. Okay, so they'll take care of you. They'll deliver it, all right, to Speedweed. Uh, just go to speedweed.com. Go to at speedweed, uh, speedweed.com. They will take care of you. They got CBD. They got medical marijuana. They, I mean, obviously, they got marijuana. They got CBD. They got edibles. Anything you need, they will take it anywhere in California. Take it right to you. Overnight delivery, same day delivery. They're good people. Mention MMA Roasted. You get $10 off, $100 or more. Okay? Also, listen, a lot of people are hesitant to try hemp derived CBD because they don't know where to start. All right? They don't know what's going on. They don't know which one to take. Well, Nature's Oils Online is the best. CBD I've ever experienced, okay? I rub it all over my body <laughs> after the gym, uh, everywhere, even my penis, okay? <gasps> everywhere. Uh, and then I, my, 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 my dog takes the CBD dog treats. It, it's awesome. It's the best stuff. It's a family-owned business, and it's, it provides the highest quality U.S.-grown hemp-derived CBD products and also give personal guidance on choosing the right product and finding a dose that works for you. Their hemp is grown in the U.S. without the use of pesticides and is mixed with organic MCT coconut oil. Each batch is third-party tested for potency and purity, and the results are posted on their website. They have full-spectrum uh, or whole plant hemp oil extract, hemp-derived isolate tinctures, hemp and emu oil, uh, oil pain balm, and full-spectrum CBD dog chews. Go to naturesoilsonline.com and include free shipping within the continental U.S. Call them directly at 469-525-3131. That's 469-525-3131. And we're offering 15% discount. Just go to put an Adam 15 to get 15% off. I'm telling you guys, this is the best CBD you'll ever experience, okay? So, uh, hope all is well. Uh, what's going on with you, man? Not much. Uh, just got back from Costa Rica. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Costa Rica with the lady for eight days is, um, if you have the chance, I recommend it to anybody, especially if you're a, a working man like me and you hate your job. Uh, it's, you hate it's your job, really? really? Nice. It's just, I don't hate it. I just, I've for my entire life kind of avoided being the guy that had to wear a collared shirt and slacks and sit at a desk. And, we doing security now, though, isn't that badass? But that's like, what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm the TV guy, so I'm, I'm sitting at the desk in my, in my suit every day with my nice shoes, and, and you're uh, watching a TV monitor and just watching, like, thirty monitors. Have you ever had any kind so, of a? We don't. We I'm, I'm on the day shift. Like I, I get there at seven and I work till three thirty. So like we don't really have much of anything going on just watching people come in and out of work but the night shift guys have made a couple of rests and like we get like taggers on the street and you know people like trying to vandalize and that's pretty much it but see what you went to they get some stuff you went to costa rica with your girl (laughs) Mm -hmm. now i've always wanted to do something like that with my girl but i'm always like how how do you plan it you go on expedia or do you go on a she did everything he did everything she's amazing she um she book tickets she booked hotels or like a airbnbs um and then we we pretty much just winged all the activities it was like wake up and see how we're feeling and decide what we're gonna do so we did suspension bridges one day we did uh a chocolate tour see how they make chocolate which was fucking awesome because right. they gave us just cho- like eat as much chocolate as you want <laughs> it's like being willy wonka in the jungle wow um 
So that was cool. But yeah, it was like, if you go down there, like don't plan anything, just go to go and like, and relax. Now, th- now you, relax. you didn't train for 10 days. Did that drive you crazy? Didn't train for 10 days. I was supposed to, we were actually like a mile away from a resort that has Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, all sorts of stuff. It's like designed for martial artists to come and spend a week there taking classes oh, wow. and training and stuff. Um, and I didn't go. I was supposed to, but I drank too much. Got it. Um, so yeah, I was going a little, it, I was I mean, getting a little like, a little antsy, yeah. but at the same time, it was nice. I didn't gain a single pound. I was wow. drinking beer on the beach all day for eight days. Now, when I don't do comedy for like a, a day <laughs> or a week, at my comedy just starts coming out in places where people don't want it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like at like the bank or at the grocery store to somebody like that's annoying me somewhere on a plane or something. Is that how you are with fighting? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm not like that with right. fighting. So I'm not going around like just trying to beat the shit just out of people. Just arm people <laughs> that like bother you. Just tossing people on their head after they cut me off. Um, no, it, like... I, I knew going into it, I had told myself, like, all right, you're not going to train, you know? And I haven't been training, like, super hard since my fight. I haven't trained super hard. Um, I have a tournament coming up, so now I'm going to start kicking it back in. But I've been, you know, like, two days a week. So you're a brown belt. Is it a brown belt tournament? It's a, it's a all, all ages. All ages, all, ages? all belts tournament. But they, they, like, you compete by your belt and your weight. And your age, actually, if you choose to. So you're in the over sixty. So I'm, yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, I'm in the uh, the old man division. I'm in are the you really? first. The first. Well, they have like so. There's adult, and then there's masters, and like masters two, masters three, and then there's seniors. So I'm masters one, like okay. the first. And what, how old is that? I think it's thirty to thirty four or thirty five. Wow. Yeah, because and there is a difference. I mean, like just I've been competing since I was nineteen. And like, even as a, as a 19, 20 year old blue belt, I would have, I would have been fucking me up a little bit now. Like I wouldn't lose, but just the, the testosterone and the muscle mass. Well, that did you watch was the Aspen there Jordan like, Burroughs? Exactly. That's what I mean. So it's like, you, like a 10 year younger version of me would kick my ass a little bit now, but I'd still like out technique. thing is, him. I know wrestling, like, I mean, that's my thing. And I was like... It's so hard to think of Ben Askren losing, and yeah. I'm like, and the last time we saw Askren compete, like in either a internet, you know, one of these like uh, beat the streets type thing mm-hmm. event, not beat the streets, but one of those events, like he he was beating like national champions. Yeah, but then Jordan Burroughs is like, there's levels. He's to another, this. yeah, yeah. There's levels. Wow. There's levels. Just like Dennis Holman got tapped in 12 seconds. I saw that. You, would you watch that? <laughs> yes. I saw that too. I mean, Holman's a high degree black belt, right? Yeah. Yeah, and he like a hey, all credit to Dennis Allman. Like he went, he went for that heel hook. Like he knew it was coming, and he went for his. And Craig Jones is just Craig Jones. Now who is Craig Jones? He's an Australian guy. He's like he's kind of come up in the last year, I'd say. Um, kind of just exploded on the scene. And has been leg locking everybody. So and who would win, him or Gary Tonin? I think he beat. I think he beat Gordon Ryan. Um. I- now, it's Gordon and, Ryan and looks they're like both big. Like now, he's Gordon like a like, looks like right he's thing. like an incredible Hulk. Gordon Ryan is he is he natural? Per, I there's no way he can be. Like you can't be that big and and not be on some. Not they, saying it's steroids, but like there's something extra curricular. Did they going test on. in the jiu jitsu world? Has to be no, at all. No, no. See that's 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 not right. Because in wrestling they do. Like Paul Harris popped. Oh yeah, he popped for, <laughs> but like. Come, you know, that's you can look at them. How, how um, did they not test in that? But yeah, they because it's not they don't have the money to test for it. Come on, like, dude, Bellator doesn't fucking test. You think some jujitsu tournament's gonna test athletes? No way. Oh my like God. EBI, like what is Eddie Bravo gonna fork out fifty grand so that he can drug test all his guys? Like it's not gonna happen. But it would it, just seem like you would have a significant. First of all, I watched that. I never even watched <laughs> combat jujitsu or yeah. any type of uh, submission on the ground. I just it's just so much out there. But I, I watched it because Ellenberger was competing against Diego Sanchez. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I got to watch this. And I liked it. I just think that it, it's very, um, 
What's that, what's, that, what's that word with the end? You're just like, ugh. It's very, uh, like, it's a good it, build It's kind of lackluster, yeah. Oh, well, at the well, end. Well, the way they do it where you win by the quickest submission or the... Yeah, they yeah, gotta the figure escape, out a, the quickest maybe, escape. Why don't they just do, like, first takedown wins? Because that would... That well, would because then it's wrestling. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but that'd be more exciting than... I like the rule set. It's just, if you don't know what's going like on, like, like if you don't do jujitsu at least like have done jujitsu for a little while, it's not going to be interesting to you. It was interesting. It was just anticlimactic how like whoever escapes to the, the arm bar first wins. Yeah. But just because then it's like, I don't know. It just sort of favors. Yeah. Cause you can just be really good at escapes and stall for 10 minutes and then get in that position and like escape really quick, you know? Yeah. I don't know. They got to do something better. I don't know what to do. Maybe like a, a slap contest or something, or I don't know what it is, but <laughs> arm wrestling, who, who has the bigger dick in both Viagra, yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, Just I, whip them out. Dude. Who could pick up, <laughs> have like a hot chick there who could pick her up. So it's nothing that has to be, they got to figure something out because I, every, it was four in a row too. They wanted the overtime. Yeah. And then, I mean, you know, it happened. It's just like a, it's a, I mean, it's not like a fight going to a decision because obviously a fight is, is going to be more action. It's like a, it's like a Derek Lewis and Ganu fight, you know, and it kind of just ends. Who was that guy Mitrione went up against? That guy was like a monster too. That huge know. guy. No, He looked like he was like he... he had oh, like a, he was... Um, he looked like a uh, bear. What's his name? <laughs> he looked like a bear. The Brazilian guy, yeah. Yeah, who uh, was that guy? Uh, Werner? No, Fabi- Fabiano. I don't know. Or that, was a, that was a. That's like every. It's like my my biggest nightmare is going to jujitsu class and having him as the and guy. That guy, yeah. Because he looks so out of shape and doughy, yeah. but you know he just has that inner core strength and he just knows what he's doing. I mean, he was like toying with Mitrion. We have a <laughs> at our at Aloisio's school headquarters. We have a. He's probably four fifty pound black belt, and like. He he knows he has super solid technique. Like he knows everything to do, but he doesn't have to do anything. If oh. he gets on top, it's like you're you're just, you're just fucked. Yeah, that was. And he's just gonna wait it out, wait it out, and work like a little kimura or a, or an arm bar from the top, and you're done. Like yeah, yeah I it's, mean it's it, I mean it was fun miserable. to watch. Don't get me wrong, it was fun to watch. It just was a little bit like uh, I liked it, and I, I like I like Chael. I think it's good. It's just. I don't know. Plus, the guys are, it seems like the guys are too nice to each other. It looks like two guys. Well, yeah, and that's why, I think that's why the, the, uh, the high jiu-jitsu, what's the, the um, high rollers? Yeah. I think that's why high rollers caught on so well is because it's like, it's already that kind of like, oh, we're just like competing, you know, it's yeah, chill. Yeah. And then you add weed to it and it's like, now, now it makes sense. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the, the, the fight, some of the fights over the weekend. First of all, I felt so bad for Thug Rose because oh. she, did, she was doing so good. She was lighting her up on the feet, making me look really stupid for picking Andrade. Yeah. And then Andrade just like, it was almost Came like a through for desperation you. throw. It, it was weird because Rose was going for a Kimura, and, which, is a, which is a solid defense, but like, when you have the DC high crotch strength and you can just pick somebody up like that, it's, it's now, all bets are off. What could Rose have done? They said what Rose could have done differently, going for a switch or that. But do you ever train for that? Because there's no slamming in jiu-jitsu, right? No. Well, there, I mean, you can get taken down like that. Like, that's a legal takedown in jiu-jitsu. But not like that. Like it, oh, yeah. But yeah. Maybe in competing, but I mean, in, in you'll practice, get, people aren't doing that. Yeah, I mean, people get, it's frowned upon. But first time I, still, I went to a jiu-jitsu class, possible. somebody put a triangle on me and I did that rampage Arona well, slam. Well, that's different. That's they, different because it's not a takedown. Started yelling that's a at slam. Me. Like, hers oh, was yeah. a legit takedown. She had a leg and she just picked her up and like Rose held onto the Kimura, which is why her body flipped. I think if she had just let go and kind of sat on her, then it would have turned into more of a slam onto her back instead of a like. So Rose should have let go of the Kimura. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But it worked in the beginning. Yeah. It worked in the beginning. So it's like... What do you, you know, what do you do? Has that like, ever happened to you like in practice? Hindsight is twenty twenty. I've, I've gone with wrestlers that will like get me up there, but I usually don't end up getting slammed. Like I'll get taken down, but I'm landing on my feet first. Like they're trying to lift me up and slam me and I kind of just wiggle and wave my arms and legs and yeah. get back to my feet and then I'll fall. I've never really been like slammed, slammed super hard. I got double legged pretty hard once on a super clean double leg, but... That's, you know, that happens. Now, also, um, yeah, I, that, that was crazy. That was crazy. Anderson Silva needs to stop fighting. 
At this point, that was crazy too. His legs are gone. Yeah, they're gone. Both knees. I mean, it's what is he trying to prove? I don't think he's trying to prove anything. I think he just loves like that's who he is. You know, but he doesn't need the money. It's just like like BJ. <laughs> that's yeah. who he is. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I mean, I, they should all be able to fight in Ryzen on steroids. Yes. And, and, and then it'll be, that evens it out. Yeah. Because those guys on TRT are still winning those fights. They should be forced to use steroids. Yeah. It, there should be an exempt. I feel like there should be an exemption for older fighters. Like once you hit 40, if you're getting, getting tested and you're getting your testosterone levels tested and whatever, and they're lower, then like, I don't see anything wrong with taking TRT or doing TRT because it's just keeping you equal. Yeah. You know, it's keeping you equal. It's not giving you an advantage, really. I mean, Vitor, you can argue it did. Because he was argue. just... Argue? I mean, he was well, just, look at uh, him now. He was just putting uh, way course. too much in there. But uh, and if then, it's keeping it at, like, a normal level of, like, you know... They obviously did tests when they were younger. So let's see what they had when they were younger and throw them in there. Fine. But, like, then you're getting into a gray area, you know? And then Volkanovski, uh, he's great. He's but because he, he didn't like knock out Aldo, every, no one's talking about him. But it's fucking Jose Aldo. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I, I used to hate that. You go knock out Jose. I used to hate when I used to have home wrestling matches, and I'd go be up against like a tough guy, like the league champion, mm -hmm. and I would beat him. But I beat him like seven to three or something. Yeah. And some other kid on my team like pinned a, a fish. Yeah. And everyone's <laughs> like, "Oh, oh look that how guy's," great. and you're like, "Yeah, but that's not. You don't know. I feel like that's what we're dealing with right now." Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, Jose Aldo, I think people forget, people forget very quickly for sure, but I think they forget how great Jose Aldo was. Yeah. Like, he was great. He still is. He's good. Like, he was on a, on a tear. He beat almost anybody. Like, he body, at, not, body KO'd Jeremy Stevens. And look at what and like, did to Chad Mendez. Exactly. So it's like, you, we have to take this guy serious. Yeah. Very I, much take him serious. So what, what's going to happen? You think he's going to fight Holloway next? I'd like to see it. Yeah. I'd like to see it. I mean, I don't know who else Max would fight. Huh. I, I'm looking I forward know. to uh, Tony Ferguson versus uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Yes. Although I, I, all I the fights at 55 right now are just... Yeah. If they, if they book McGregor and Gaethje, it's, it's Is that over. what they're talking about? I mean, that's, what, that's what's left. Ooh. You know? Who wins that that's fight? That's what's left. I don't know. Does McGregor hit too hard for Gaethje? I don't know, because Gaethje does that. I mean, he doesn't really get hit on the button. Like, Poirier it took a lot of work from Poirier to put him out, you know? And oh. he did it clean. I kind of want to see Gaethje versus uh, Al Iaquinta. I'd like to see that, too. <laughs> That'd be, be like a great to fight. Too. Oh, um, man. But, yeah, I think... Um, what was the one that you said? Uh, Cerrone. Cerrone, yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's a good fight. And, and he's looked... I mean... You know, we, we'll see where Tony is. I mean, Tony's just coming off that win of uh, over. But can Tony do? Can he do what? I'm trying to think. Okay, who has the advantage on the feet? Oh, Cerrone. Cerrone all right? day, all day, and Tony gets hit a lot, and that's the that's the issue. Is that he's not afraid to get hit, and Cerrone is a precision striker. So, so he's on the ground, be, who's better on the ground? That is where it's a toss up for me. I would because, say Ferguson's more because, creative, right? Uh, Ferguson's more creative. He definitely has a better guard than Cerrone, I think. But, I mean, Cerrone, is a, he's a legit black belt. Cowboy, Cowboy can throw down anywhere it goes. And I don't think he has any fear of Tony Ferguson at all. Ferguson's a better wrestler. You know? College wrestler. Better wrestler. But uh, like, who's tougher? I would say, I would say Tony. But if you put it in we've seen, we've seen, we've seen Cowboy get, get like, into that, into that little scared spot where he's getting tagged a little bit, and he does the tie thing where he just covers up and waits it out. But it's like they're just going to stop the fight. You know, Tony starts swinging and but, doing but will Ferguson's funk and, work against Cerrone? I don't know. Like that, that things, yeah. that stuff he does. It's that, like this that weird, <laughs> that weird movement and the and the kung fu and the is it wing chung. It's wing chung. Somebody asked me the other day, should I take Muay Thai? My friend was like, I want, I, I want to take a martial art. And I'm like, I'm not really high in Muay Thai right now because it's just like, I just like it. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to spar a little bit. I feel comfortable. Yeah. I'm learning how to kick. I'm learning how to punch better, learning combinations. And it's not killing my body yeah. like jujitsu was. And nothing against jujitsu, but just after, after you, an ACL tear, it's hard. When you have a baby yeah. and you start second guessing it. And 
coming from a wrestling background helps a lot, but also in some ways hurts because in wrestling, you're told to power through everything. Power right. through, power through, right. power through. Jiu-Jitsu, it's like, no, you tap, tap. Yeah. And it was hard to know when I was in trouble. When to power through and when to tap. Yeah, yeah. That was really hard for me. Um, I do miss it. I do miss the... I mean, I, I was getting winded a lot. I was gassing a lot because I was going 100% and then be like... <laughs> you know? <laughs> but... I do miss it, but I'm liking Muay Thai right now. But he asked me, should I take Muay Thai or Kung Fu? And I told my friend, I said Muay Thai all day. Yeah. And he goes, why not? I go, well, put it this way. There's never been a Kung Fu champion in the UFC. Uh, Zabit's coming. Is he Kung Fu? <laughs> Zabit's a Kung Fu guy, yeah. Really? Yeah. But he, but he, that's uh, the thing. With like, a, with like an MMA fighter, to say you're a Kung Fu guy or a Muay Thai guy or a Jiu Jitsu guy, unless you're Damian Maya, you're not a guy. You're right, a fu- right. You're an MMA fighter. Right, but there's you know, never like, been a guy with your like, background in Kung Fu. R- yeah. I mean, no, Ryan Nelson was Kung Fu. You know, but uh, I'm trying to think who was, who, who had a Kung Fu background? No one. No one, right? I don't think. I so, mean, you know, Anderson Silva to. does like the little hand stuff and, and Tony does like, he draws from Wing Chun and Kung Fu, I think. But James Vick told me he's been studying Kung Fu for a couple for a couple years now, and he, he's gonna bring it to the UFC. Well, but let's I, go. But I don't know. There's definitely this is my thing with like with MMA. It's you pick and choose from whatever martial arts are going to work for you and work for your body and how you move and how you think. Like Pettis, for example, Taekwondo black belt, but knows how to throw a Muay Thai round kick. Right. So he can use like the agility of taekwondo but sprinkle in the power of muay thai you know and he makes it work for him him. nate diaz oh fucking banger i'm very into that see just just when bellator you think they start to get a little bit of advantage because that car was stacked the ufc goes the ufc goes all right let's let's make some (laughs) some fights that everyone's going to talk about yep just when bellator was like you know I mean, a little bit of traction, a little bit of traction. I mean, MVP losing, that was pretty badass. just because of how cocky he is. And because I was like, will anyone ever catch this style? And then when he, when what's name did what he did. Yeah. Oh, that Douglas kick, Lima. that kick was, but it, it was so perfectly timed, but also it seemed so obvious, right? Yeah. <laughs> like just kick the lead leg. Yeah. It was so close to him. Kick the lead leg. I mean, it was right next to him, but he was hurt. So MVP usually isn't that close. Yeah. He's never that close. He doesn't stand that close. And that's, I mean, that was a, you know, small error on his part that, that cost him the fight. Lima told me he was really hurt, by yeah. the way. I talked to him. And he, but he did say that he practiced that. That, that like, that they, they watched film and they go that he didn't know exactly when that was going to, or not exactly, but he knew what to do he when. He knew it was going to happen. He just didn't, yeah. yeah, he didn't know when. It was crazy. Which, man, it was, it was pretty awesome to watch. What wasn't was awesome, to awesome to watch, to watch was watch. Jack Swagger. I mean, <laughs> look, I like Jack Swagger. He beat Cain Velasquez in wrestling in college. He's a legitimate wow. All-American, awesome, you could tell. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. But let's, let's get, so, even if you have to go and get like a, get someone that looks like they're a fighter. Right. Not looks like they just won a pie eating contest yeah. at the state fair. I mean, it was insane. It was don't it was, be mean to Roy Nelson like that. It was looked like a Jack Black movie, and like at the last, the guy did look like Jack Black, like yeah. legit looked like Jack Black, and and probably fought very close to how Jack Black. Played. I think Jack Black might beat him actually. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he guy was nine and one as an amateur. Who are these nine guys he beat? Well, that's a thing I think too at heavyweight, where it's like when you're that big, you could you could have guys that just think they can fight, and it's like one punch is going to end it. But he also lost so 60 pounds. All you got to do is, he was is three, land something. He was 340 before that fight. There you go. I mean, so that's like, that's him in shape? I guess so. Uh, that's, oh my I God. I guess so. It's I like, guess that's, that's like, all the Bellator could scrounge up. But, and that's the thing. It's like they have so many fighters. Like, you have legit fighters. Oh, yeah. We know they do. Look at AJ he McKee was, was right before him. one of them. Yeah, exactly. Like, like give him a, give him oh, a legit guy. Oh, what do you mean? You mean at heavyweight? Yeah. Well, oh, well, they have guys. Yeah, but at the same they time, I, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a couple. There was they signed some wrestlers that were really good. There was one guy I think from Arizona they signed. I think his name was Jared. <coughs> Jared something. I had him on the show because I talked about how he had the body of Oprah or something. Jack. <laughs> he was like the when they find when they signed the Fab Five. They signed like the Fab Five wrestlers at one point, and um. And I remember they signed this guy, and I was like, there was a guy that, this big black guy with a legitimate college wrestling background, 
I thought he'd be a great for Jack Swagger. The problem is one of them's going to lose, but so what? You know? Well, like... They don't want to lose their investment, though. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, so I get it, I, but it's like now it's, it, they're, they're treating it like boxing, where they're just like, oh, we have this star that we want to build up. Let's just throw them guys so we can have a record. Like, like nobody... People are onto that game, yeah. you know? And the, the reason it works is in boxing is because none of it's televised. Like, people's first 20 fights right. aren't on primetime TV. Yeah. They're not on pay-per-views. They're in some gym somewhere where, like, 60 people show up, and there you go. Well, that's, a, that's the difference, though, is, like, when you have the promotion sign one versus, like, a Golden Boy MMA. Like, a, if, like, Golden Boy or Top Rank signed them, they would put them on Top Rank cards. You wouldn't hear them. Right. Until they're this. But if, when Bellator signs you, exactly. then, then what are they going to do? I, I, I understand the dilemma. But I don't know. Is he, is he, and is he, but is he really bringing in that many people, though, like wrestling fans? And we're only talking about him because of his shitty opponents. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <clears throat> I mean, that, that's the proof in the pudding. Yeah. Like, we're not talking about, oh, his wrestling credentials. Oh, he, re- he did the... Like, no, I'm saying no, WWE talk- wrestling. Yeah, you're talking about some yeah. f- fat guy that he fought. But by the way, uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. By the way, Tyler Diamond, like I mentioned in the last podcast, won his fight, which was awesome. Congrats, uh, Tyler. He fought a guy that, and he told me he picked the guy because he was undefeated. They picked the game another guy that had a couple losses. He said, no, I'm the undefeated guy. But th- this guy, like, nine submissions, 10-0 and 0, or s- something, and had, or like, all stoppages, hadn't fought in two years, and, like, hurt Tyler bad. Yeah. Tyler came back and hurt him bad, but he, this guy was, like, laughing at Tyler and he lost 30 to 27, but I can't wait to see him again. I mean, it was crazy. He was yawning. Tyler took him down and started yawning. And, and, then, uh, and then before that fight, Josh Berkman fought, who got his mouth guard taken out, like he punched out of his mouth, p- went to the ground and picked it up, put him back in his mouth, and the other guy was chasing him around trying to punch him while this was going on. It while was, he was putting his mouth yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah, it was very, It was very entertaining. Hey, whatever. Uh, Good on him. So let's talk about... If the ref doesn't stop the fight, you don't stop fighting. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Now, let's talk about some of the fights this week because I'm excited. I want to hear your opinion on it. Yes. All right. So this week, uh, we got Kevin Lee, Rafael Dos Anjos. This is a must win for Kevin Lee. Rafael Dos Anjos, I feel like, is on his way out, the one way down. He, he, he won the belt. He did, he, you know, but Kevin Lee is still young, really young. Yeah. But if he loses <clears throat> again... If, like two in a row to out, first ally came to this that's not good it um yeah it, it's not gonna be good for Kevin Lee I think man I don't know about this fight cause RDA's wrestling is legit yeah his gas is legit and I think his stand up is, is better than Kevin Lee's so if he can stop that takedown it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough night for Kevin Lee like Kevin, Kevin Lee's gonna be he's gonna have to do some work to to get this win. Like Kevin they're Lee, they're like, definitely not being nice to I him. I think Kevin switched cams. You know? I think he like went Twitter silent. I haven't seen him on any Instagram or Twitter. I haven't heard a thing out of him. I forgot he was fighting. Yeah. I mean I think maybe he's realized that he was getting too involved and a lot of fighters do that. Some fighters that it seems to help. Yeah. Um, I other, mean other for people, sure. Other people it could be a huge distraction. I think it has to be you have to know yourself and know like where that balance lies between the, the self-promotion and just buckling down and training and being ready. I mean, when that guy lost recently, um, that guy, I forget, the black guy from Texas who lost to the Russian, he kept tweeting about how he wanted to fight um, Greg Hardy, and then he loses on the UFC on the card. Yeah. And then like a minute later goes, I lost a pride, fuck Greg Hardy. Like, and you're like, <laughs> like, dude, what? You're obsessed with Greg Hardy. And yeah, what, like focus on the fight that's in front of you. You just lost two seconds ago. Like, what are you doing? One something. One. I forgot the guy's name. Big guy, tough guy, but it seems a little strange. Oh, so, in, uh, in one FC, by the way, Aoki is fighting Christian Lee. Yes, Shinya Aoki. Shinya Aoki. Tell me about him. I don't Still know fighting. Him. I know he's Still a legend, fighting. but tell me. Yeah, about- legend. He's a jujitsu guy, like huge jujitsu guy. Um, God, who hasn't he fought? He's fought. He's a Pride veteran, UFC veteran. I, I, he's one of those. The same thing, like Anderson Silva. You know, like that. Not that that status, but why are you still doing it? You know, it's, it's he has to just love it. I know like, he didn't do very good in the UFC, right? He, 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 he didn't do great. I think he had a couple wins, but it wasn't anything. Nothing spectacular. Um, we'll see. 
I mean, right. the guy's like 40, what, 42, I think, 43. And then Sage Northcutt taking on Cosmo Alexander. Know nothing about Cosmo, but Sage should. That's, I feel like one is one of those, like, they brought those guys over, so they're going to they're gonna take it a little easy on them for the first couple fights. Um, maybe not DJ. DJ had a, had a pretty good guy that he fought, but. Yeah, like the, the Sages and Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, Eddie Alvarez freaking lost. <laughs> I mean, they um, lost quickly. So we'll see. I mean, I think that that's their idea, but it's like you never know. You and know, Gary MMA Tonin, is that is that game. Like you never know. Gary Tonin's been talking. It's funny, Nakahara. Yeah, he's he's very. Uh, Why? I love Gary Tonin because he's so self-deprecating and like self-aware that he's like, "Oh, well, it's gonna be a great night if I don't get knocked the fuck out by this guy." <laughs> like, <laughs> like he knows what he is. You know, Gary Gary Tonin knows that he's a jujitsu guy. Like, yeah, he had a knockout in his last fight, but he's not a he's not a stand-up fighter. He has decent stand-up. Um, but he knows like he's gonna have to take it to the ground and finish it. And if he does, that's the thing with a guy that good. If he gets him on the ground, he's gonna finish him. I want to see so, Gary versus Northcutt. I would love to see that. Who wins that fight? I would love to see that. Uh, Gary Tonin. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I Even think though so. Sage's experience in karate and I think I think Gary I think Gary just singles just gets a single because Gary Tonin's a good wrestler. He's yeah. a really good wrestler. Very underrated wrestler. Like wow. he loves takedowns. That's crazy. Um I mean he wrestled in, in high school. He was like a high school wrestler yeah, yeah. and then started jujitsu. So he has that base. But I don't think Sage like I don't think Sage is anywhere close to where he is. Wow. If it goes to the ground. Oh, if it goes to the ground. Yeah. If it goes to the ground. And I think he'll just I think he'll single him. And KSW, yeah, if they uh, ever fight. Scott Ashcam. That guy's a fun fighter to watch. I've watched him fight a couple times. Norman Park. Came to show. Uh, he's he's on that card. I like I like Norman a lot. Tiago Silva's on the card against Martin Zawada. Tiago right. Silva. That's yeah. the name I haven't heard in a really long time. Yeah. He, Didn't he, he like go to prison or something? Yeah, he, he had a like a standoff. With, yeah, with, like uh, he pulled a gun on like cops or <laughs> his wife or something. something. Yeah. I, the way he came to the gym and there was a guy that was like banging his ex wife and Yeah, he, he, had, and like, he like showed up. Yeah. But he didn't go to prison. He got like got off. Oh, did he? Yeah, he never. He just got like that cut. was the last I heard. From yeah, that him. was, was like, sort of like it was like, like he got surrounded by the police. <laughs> that was the last people wanted to fuck with him. Actually, yeah, exactly. And then okay, and then UFC card. <clears throat> Vicente Luque is fighting. Opponent. Vicente and Neil Magny. I think Neil Magny pulled out because now it's saying oh, opponent PBA. What? I don't know if that's true, but according to this app, Ian Heinrich is the guy I talked to. Yep, he's uh, he's fighting Shoe Face. Yeah, I hope Ian wins, man. Who and they have like a picture of some random guy. <laughs> On the, <laughs> and what MMA junkie? Unless it's a different and 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 Carlo, Antonio Carlos Jr. Unless it's a different shoe face. What happened? Yeah, they just have some. I'm just on like oh. Google. They just have some dude, some yeah. bald black guy. Um, shoe face is a beast. Shoe face is a beast. I think he'll take that. I hope not. This other guy's got some story. He was like in prison in Greece on the Canary Islands, and he was he was transferring cocaine and balloons in his stomach back and forth. Oh, this is him. Yeah, this is him. Oh, dude, and, let's and, go, Ian. And the guy, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just had some craziest it's the life. The craziest life ever. Ever. He went to Rikers Island and punched out the leader of some gang, and they wanted to kill him, and his mom bailed him out, and he was hooked on ecstasy and hooked on this and hooked on that. And Jeez. Megan Anderson against Felicia Spencer. I don't know much about Felicia Spencer. Do you? I don't know anything about Felicia Spencer. Megan's coming off her win over Cat. Over Cat. Cat. It was weird. The, the weird, yeah, the weird toe. Yeah, toe jam. Toe scratch. Camel toe. Uh, <laughs> um, she's always fun to watch, and she's fucking huge. So and she's kind of hot. She's pretty hot. She is pretty she's hot. She's super hot if she wasn't like six one. And so angry too, and like way bigger than and me. And she had resting big face. <laughs> she, had, she also, yeah, I've never hooked up with a girl at six one. No, uh, I've never hooked up with a girl that was taller than me. Mm, I think I have. Probably pretty easy. But I just feel like, oh, thank you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's hard when get, they lift you up and get pound you. Yeah, exactly. Um, Car- uh, Charles Oliveira taking on Nick Lentz. Ooh, that's a good fight. Does Oliveira like, lose a lot, though? No, he just, he's, he's won like... Who, who did he beat? last three... Um, I know he, he just beat David Tamer was his last his last win. Ooh, um yeah. I think he yeah, he subbed him. Dude, Charles Oliveira, like he just I can't picture a fight except for Cody Garbrandt because I was there. Um I can't picture a fight. Was that him? No, that wasn't him. 
That no. was the other the other Brazilian dude. Yeah, yeah, I no. can't picture a fight where Charles Oliveira isn't strangling somebody. Yeah, he's really good. Like at I can't think of of his losses. But Nick Lance is one of those dudes that like wins the fight. You think he's gonna lose? Yeah. Loses the fight. Thinks he's gonna win. But he's I like him. Big Trump supporter. <laughs> uh, although he's like yelling at Trump online the other day for like raising for banning the the, the thing with the, the tariffs. Is it's like fucking with his like stocks. Like he's <laughs> like, Jeez. he's a smart guy though, Lance. Yeah. I like him. I like yeah, him. I like, yeah. I like the guy. And he's a great fighter. He's a great fighter. He left ATT. He's, he went to the Black Zillions. Interesting. And then he beat Will Brooks, his old like training partner. Remember? Oh yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Will Brooks, man, he kind of just fell off the map. Yeah. Remember, he was, I mean, he beat Michael Chandler twice. Like, convincingly yeah, in Bellator. He did. Yeah, he that, that Chandler fight was rough to watch. Dude, that was rough to watch. Dobby Ramos. Bad. I don't know who Dobby is. Dobby Ramos. He is a ADCC heavyweight champ. Or no. 55. Lightweight champ. Oh. Lightweight? Wasn't he the bad guy in a... Uh, uh, Davi, wasn't he the no, guy? I don't know what he competes at jiu-jitsu, but he's an ADCC, IBJJF world champ. Like, he's, he's legit. Wasn't he the bad guy in uh, Iron Fist? Davi? You ever see Iron I Fist? I didn't watch Iron oh, Fist. Yeah, I didn't him. watch that garbage. Oh. I heard. I heard before I started it that yeah. it was terrible. So he, this guy's a big uh, jiu guy. He's a jiu-jitsu guy, yeah. You know anything he, about Austin um, Hubbard? I know nothing about Austin Hubbard. Uh, and see, how are probably, Eubanks? since we do an MMA podcast, we should probably it's learn about hard. these guys, some, right? Some of these people. Right? <laughs> There's just so, so Jara many. Eubanks. Who's, I talked Sarge. to her friend. Uh, I talked to her buddy, Caitlin Chukagan, who says that so, so she's looking good. She's at 135. She's going to make weight against Aspen Ladd, who's looking like a fucking world beater. Dude, lately. Aspen Ladd is awesome. Do you follow her on Instagram? Yeah. All her pictures are her and fucking her two wolves. Really? They're she's like wolves? three. They're Siberian huskies, but they're giant, dude. They're like up to her chest. And, uh, and every picture is just like, oh, hiking with the babies and you know, taking the dogs out. It's, fuck, it's rad. I like She's her, She's a though. rad chick, yeah. And she doesn't give a shit. Like, she comes to fight. But Sajara Eubanks is a really so does, good. Yeah, so does Sarge. So it's, I think it's just going to be like, this is going to be one of those like early days of the female fights where they're just beating the shit out of each other, and it's going to be awesome. There was a great knockout in the UFC with the two Brazilians on the undercard. It was the first fight of the night. Girl got clocked. Didn't like, see it. it was crazy. Damn. Desmond Didn't Green, who had some trouble with the law, I think he got like a DUI and like killed some. I don't. I don't know what happened. Some guy. Some allegedly some some down and like. Hope he's. I mean, hope the person's out. Well, I don't know what happened, but I know that like he's won his last couple of fights, and so uh, uh, who knows what what the deal is there. Uh, Grant Dawson, uh, who Grant Dawson came to my show in Missouri. He has like the worst ADHD ever. Yeah. Uh, Love the kid. I think he was like a state champ. Wrestler, tough kid, uh, trains under um, James Krause, taking on Mike Trezano, who's 8-0. It should be a good fight. Mike Trezano, was, was he a tough guy or a contender? I don't know. Contender not, looks guy? like he's a Jersey Shore guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he looks like Vinny. Yeah. Pat Cummings versus Ed, <laughs> Ed Herman. Pat Cummings, Ed Herman. Like, I think, uh, like I mean, we, we know how Ed Herman feels about, feels about jiu-jitsu. Um, wow, what did he say? Ed, Ed wasn't Herman? Ed Herman the guy the guy that said jujitsu doesn't work? That's Dave Herman. Dave Herman. Yeah, no, that's Dave <laughs> Herman. Yeah. Um, Dave Herman, who like got into like a high speed chase by the cops, and then like tried to claim police brutality, but like it wasn't. And it was, oh, Ed Herman. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, light heavyweight. Yes. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen him fight in a Cummings while. Cummings has not looked good. His, last his uh, fights. he has no. He hasn't looked great. I mean, he's always been a weird one because he got thrown into the UFC. Like, your first fight is DC. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what are you supposed to do? He called him out. You too. know, he made like, him cry in practice. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Like, I mean, he was second in the country in NCAA wrestling. It was not. He's no slouch. He was a Penn State guy. And I heard no, he was yeah, a monster I, in practice. And that's the thing is like is but sometimes it doesn't always translate. You know, it just doesn't always translate. To, to MMA. It should, but it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and But Ed Herman, same thing. Like, like he's lost, what, four of his last five? Has he really? Yeah. To Derek Brunson, Krylov, lost to C.B. Dalloway, and John Vellante. So, <clears throat> I mean, he's losing to good guys, but he's not losing to great guys. Yeah. He beat Tim Bosch. <laughs> so, like, you, you never know with these guys. And then Tim everything like else is like old, win, though. loss, win, loss, win, loss, no contest. Yeah. Couple wins, couple losses. 
Um, I don't know about this one. These guys should go to the PFL and try to win a million dollars. Exactly. Like these are the level guys that should be doing that. A if you're going to be fighting anyway, you might as well fight for yeah, a million Yeah, if you're going to be bucks. on the ESPN plus, 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 you know. But at the, the same time, like, I get the I want to be in the UFC. I get it too. But angle. A million I, bucks. I understand. A million dollars. Yeah, a million, a million, a million dollars. dollars and you're fighting John Howard. No disrespect to John Howard, but th- these guys that you can beat. Yeah. You know, very beatable guys. I, yeah. mean, I mean, come on. What are we doing here? Uh, Zach Cummings is taking on Trevor Giles. I don't know. I think it was Jay Giles' brother. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, undefeated. Undefeated. But Zach undefeated. Cummings. Did Zach win his last fight or lose? Um, I don't know. He's a tough know. guy, Zach I Cummings. Will look. He is, but he's another one like, <coughs> like Patrick Cummings where it's just like. But he's won a lot a more. Couple, yeah, Patrick. he wins a couple and then No, he's doing a lot better than Patrick. Win, then he'll lose. Zach. What was Zach's last fight? I like Zach. Yeah, and he's a suit like he's a lovable guy. That's the that's the thing about Zach Cummings. Like like nobody has a problem with him. He's no, just the course. he's just the super cool like hi oh, man, I'm from Missouri, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe um, in sunscreen. Trevor Smith was he his win? last win. Yeah. He, 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 he's coming off a win. Yeah. So, so why he's are they off burying him under the uh, this? I mean, he he I don't know. Is is he really like a like a name? Like like no, most people, no. unless you're a, a hardcore fan, you don't know who Zach Cummings is. So I get why they would put Hello. him there. Hello, Phil Baroni. What's up? Who's this? This is Adam Hunter. You're on the MA Roasted Podcast. How are you, man? What's up, brother? How are you? Good, good, good. So uh what's up? Uh, nothing. Nothing. So uh, I saw that you guys uh, did you sign with Combate? Um. No, not with Combate. Not with Combate. Oh, because I, I I saw on your Instagram you had like a uh, you were at the Combate event and it seemed like they yes. were they were gonna they were gonna sign you. Seemed like that, huh? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm doing some pro wrestling in Mexico. Oh, nice. Oh, amigo. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. Now, yeah. what happened? You and, now, awesome. now, you and Bonner got banned from something? What happened? Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, hood slam, some bullshit pro wrestling fucking thing. You see all that? Yeah. Uh, no, tell me what happened. Oh, uh, you don't know? I don't know. I forgot. So, hold on. What happened? Oh, we, got, we went in there. We, we uh... The dude's a transsexual, and he, and, and he had a crush on me, and uh, I don't know. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened. I got next bottle this one. So, so the dude, Wait, the what, you were supposed to wrestle a, a transsexual wrestler? There was a transsexual wrestling promoter, and he had a crush on me. And somehow we got, he, somehow he saw some nudes to me or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm fucking. I wasn't ready to get a call, bro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's when it's the best calls, man. No, Phil. There's no such thing as a bad call with Phil Baroni. Uh, you understand that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Are you Are you taking bong hits? Yeah, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> I live on a weed farm. Oh, uh, you live on a weed farm. Now, I saw you do grappling in, like, a backyard. You were fucking some kid up. Uh, the guy was saying that you couldn't tap him, and then the next thing I know, you, you were tapping him. Yeah, some dude from Brazil. Some black buff from Brazil, Brazil came here. Some, uh, I don't know. But you were, you were beating him with, like, you were, wearing, you were wearing your wrestling shoes, and you were, you were beating him with, like, leg locks and toe holds and stuff. I, yeah. I was using fucking Ken Shamrock shit on his ass. Beautiful. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Now, now, we talked about the last time in your bare knuckle boxing match, you came in drunk. Uh, you had four drinks and three shots, and you said Coleman bought you these drinks, right? Yeah. So, so that, was, that, that, that was a big mistake, because then I'll, next thing I know, you don't remember what happened. Chris Lieben hit oh. you. But, but you learned your lesson, no more drinking before, before bare knuckle fights. No more drinking. That's it. Now you were, and then you were on the wagon, but then Bonner got you off the wagon. Yes. Yes. Now, are you, are you back on the wagon? Yes. Today I am. That's, that's good. That's good. Today you are. That's good. Because cause it's, it seems like a guy, uh, you're hanging out with a guy with an ankle bracelet, maybe isn't the best influence on you. 
Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Probably, probably not. <laughs> now we talked about uh, he talked about I don't know if you know who Tom Ryan is Tom Ryan was yeah. like one of the best wrestling coaches ever great wrestler now he when he went wrestler from New York right one of the best wrestlers from New York from New York he was coaching Phil at Hofstra and then he brought in the boxing gloves well when Phil one day brought in boxing gloves and wanted the whole team to fight and Tom Ryan's like I'll fight you and Phil knocked out the coach uh, did did Tom get back to you about this. No, he, no. Did he ask? Did he get back to you about it? Can't no, you? no, no. I thought they had, I had a transfer. Then I had a fucking transfer. He was fucking. He was butthurt about it. For you know, I had, I had to keep that. I had to go to a different college. Wait, that's the reason you had a transfer because you knocked out the oh, coach. Yeah. yeah, can't knock out the coach. I thought it was because you sold the football team G, and then you had the, the <laughs> and, you, and you had the football team all on like some kind of drugs. Uh. That was part of it. Part of it. <laughs> that wasn't why he had to transfer, though. That was just why he was in trouble. That's the main part of it. <laughs> that was the main part. Okay. Uh, now, after you left Hofstra and you were um, and you were a pro fighter, at what point were you stripping on an all black dance team in Jamaica? Well, I get. I guess my fifth, my fifth, I started doing my my fifth. I was a five year senior. Yeah. So I started doing. I guess my junior year or something. I was in college. Had to make some money, huh? Now, 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 and now you were the only white guy on the uh, all black male we, review. Yeah, yeah. We went to the Bahamas. We went to Jamaica. Now, did they have huge slongs? And were you ever like embarrassed that maybe yours wasn't as big? No. Oh, okay. No, he's the New York now, badass. Now, man. did Come like on. did like a lot of the black girls want to have sex with you because you kind of slept? Yes. Yes. So, how many black girls do you think that you slept with during this uh, time on the black dance team? No, it was, it was, it was mostly white girls, bro. We go, we go, we go to it's sometimes black girls, but we go to like fucking like uh, like breezes. A place called it's like a little it's like a little family like breezes. It was called. And then we do a mirror review there for all the girls. Oh wow! And they have sex. Was Man. That a sex? You know, it was it was it was a it was a, you know a service. Of course, yeah, service. Yeah, you were, yeah. You were yeah, yeah, providing a service. Was Nothing the, wrong I was with the that. Local white boy, but it was all the rich ladies that wanted to, you know, that would cheat on her husband. The husbands were wearing business, and they were in the Bahamas. Right, of course, and then. Like a rich lady gimmick. You gotta, <laughs> and one token white guy was me, Cream. And then how many, like, I watched one of your fights back in Pride when you were fighting this, like, Japanese guy. I think he was, like, a wrestler, a Japanese professional wrestler, and you just beat the shit out of him and then started foot stomping him afterwards. On his uh, head. On his head. Yeah, on his head. Yeah. Who was, and, and that guy was a good guy. That guy beat a lot of guys. That was a good guy. <laughs> Yeah, he was, supposed to, he was supposed to beat me. He was a really good guy. Uh, and you were just not, I mean, you were, it was like, did you did you practice that and, and like practice like curb stomping that was, people? That was, that was from fucking street fighting in Master Pico. Take the guy down and, you know, kick him real fast. Kick him in the face. Get up. Take him down and get up and kick him in the head. Just Damn. regular street move. That was, that was insane. That was insane. Now, a, a, afterwards, did you have threesomes with the, with the Japanese girls? Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah, I stayed like for. I actually went to Thailand after after that. Oh I my god! For a week. I can't even picture. So it was like you. I wonder why I'm divorced. Yeah, I wonder why you're divorced. But so like now you're in Stockton, and like is it is it a big like it must be a big come down from like that life of just. No, now I'm a Lodi. Now I'm a Lodi. This is nice over here. This is nice. I live on a fucking winery. I train oh, yeah. and stuff. stuff. Nice. Train, train. Who do you who do you live with? I got like, I got a little I got a little fucking little uh, what is this thing townhouse I don't know what this little townhouse thing a little, little house. Nice, nice. Little 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 fucking guest house guest house. Yeah. Now I see you. I watch your Instagram feed. You're always in the gym. You're pumping these huge weights. I mean, you got to be hitting almost hitting forty. How how does a guy like you stay so freaking jacked? Steroids. <laughs> I, I mean, aren't you nervous it's going to fuck up your body? 
No. Now, are you are you injecting them or are you, is it pills? I, I, eating them. You're eating steroids. I, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. I, I, I have no idea. Where do you even get steroids? Obviously, obviously. You put them in your mouth and you eat them and then you do Funko push ups and shit. <laughs> Wow. See, that's how steroids should be done. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking do them. Do them and do the work. Just fucking eat them and just do push-ups. You know? Now, who do you think is going to win, Nate Diaz or Anthony Pettis? Diaz. Diaz, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pettis is a little bit of downside. Yeah. What about uh, Tony Ferguson or Cowboy? Ferguson. Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised fight. fight. That's a good fight. That's a good either fight. Way. That's, that's either way. That's a good fight. That isn't either way. That, yeah, that's a but, 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 but I'm just saying, I have a, I have a funny feeling for you. But, but, just styles, you know what I mean? They're both even. It's a good fight, but. So, when are you going to Mexico to do pro wrestling? Fucking me and Bonner going like in a week or so. I can't fucking remember. I wasn't ready. I would have wrote it down. I forgot everything. That's all right. We'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll have you back on. Now, the <laughs> last time, the, the last time you had, you were at, uh, you went over to a different country. Have a pro wrestling. So it's be like fucking next week at the fuck. I don't know in fucking Mexico. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking smash this motherfucker's neck off. But I forgot. I'm fucked. Do you even know who you're wrestling? No. Me and Bonner. <laughs> First, a bunch of Mexican dudes. <laughs> is it tag? Is it a tag team wrestling? Yeah, yeah they're a tag team. Oh fuck yeah! I want to do like the Border Patrol. We're just gonna fucking kill a bunch of fucking little Mexican dudes, and pull their masks off, and beat the fucking shit out of them. We'll see if we'll see if they let us do that. Yeah, they'll let you do that. I can see they'll let you do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch that. What are they gonna? Oh do yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they'll let for you do sure. that. Of course they will. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. What, what are they well, gonna do? About it? What are they gonna do? What are they do? Well, listen, Phil Baroni, you're you're a classic, man. Uh, you you really are the best ever. Uh, I'll talk Greatest to you. ever. I'll, we'll, talk, ever. we'll talk to you soon, man. Take care, brother. Yeah, sorry, bro. <laughs> no, you're the best. You're the best. Thanks, pal. Good talking to right. you. Love you, man. All right, that was that was Phil Baroni. Man, I I will never forget, <laughs> ever forget, renting Ultimate Knockouts one over and over and over again and watching. Phil Baroni Phil run across the cage and just smash and then jump up on the cage and scream and I'm the greatest ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can never forget that. What about when he destroyed Dave Manny? Dave Manny. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dave Manny. Was, Wasn't was that a, that fight? That was, that, that was the same fight, right? Yeah, it was that fight. And, and Dave Manny was a good fighter. He, like, vetoed him. Uh, yeah, just and Dave Manny, across like, the cage. I think he beat bah, Matt Lenlin. I mean, he, he beat a lot of good guys. He was good. He he was, was, where's he now? Dave Manny? Who knows? Oh, yeah. He's probably right. coaching somewhere. Probably, right? And that's pr- that's pretty much the only uh, unless you become a pro wrestler, I guess. Do a bunch of steroids. <laughs> well, anyway, that's our podcast. What do you got coming up? Um, not much. We uh, we actually canceled the gi class at at Braxton, so now it's all no gi. Um, I'm taking a couple weeks off. Going to let it carry over from our our MMA guys, um, and then I'm going to take over in a couple weeks. So come by Tuesday and Thursday, seven o'clock for no gi jujitsu at Braxton's Combat Sports. And uh, and I got a tournament in June doing the LA Open, um, NABJJF, LA Open, June 22nd and 23rd. Uh, So I'm getting ready for that. Just training four or five days a week and eating good, eating healthy, going to get the weight back down. And um, yeah, that's it. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, listen, I'm in New York City this week. Thursday night Gotham, Friday at the uh, West Side Comedy Club, Saturday West Side Comedy Club. Next week, the Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. Uh, in June, uh, I'm in Calgary, the f- May, I think June 11th to the 16th. Then I'm in Minnesota at the end of June. July fight weekend, I am at the Stratosphere. And then mid-July, I am in Naples at the House of at the Off the Hook Comedy Club. Go to adamhunter.com. You can see where I'm at. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. Night. Trap sons and trap don't some 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 trap